Well, good morning, and welcome to the Saturday Morning Power Breakfast. Um, my name is Tony Stewart of TonyAndAngieStewart.com. And first off, before we get into the main meat of it, I want to thank everyone who suffered through last week's Saturday Morning Power Breakfast. I know we had some audio problems, and we've hopefully got those fixed. But I want to thank you. Hope you got enough value from last week's session to make up for the terrible audio and uh, we are striving to do better so anyway again welcome to the Saturday morning power breakfast um, our goal here is simple we like to help you get into the five percent club you know 95 percent of all Americans by the time they reach age 65 are dead broke or still working we are focused on taking all the blessings you know I was talking to someone just recently about how over the course of my life I've been blessed to be able to learn from such great people who just sold knowledge and wisdom into my life and as a result as a result we're now in a position to take that because we believe that those relationships that wisdom impartation was not just for us but it was for us to bless people and help them get into the five percent so everything we share in the Saturday morning power breakfast is toward that end. That being said, let's dig into and let's see what's on the menu today. Today's dish use, number one, we're gonna talk about the five pillars of wealth and really clarify that. And then we're gonna talk about some tangible ways that you can develop your action plan. And then we're gonna talk about, as the title suggested, how to go about identifying your one thing. And I think you're gonna be excited and equipped once you get through this with some great information that you can use to move forward in your journey to the 5% Club. So let's dig in. What are the five pillars of wealth? Well, there's a book by the gentleman by the name of James Arthur Ray. And James Arthur Ray, he was actually one of the people featured on uh, the well-known movie, The Secret. And he wrote this book, Harmonic Wealth, The Secret of Attracting the Life You Want. And I thought it was a great book. I enjoyed reading it. Uh, actually went to one of his seminars that they had here in Columbus, Ohio, where I live. And unfortunately, soon after, at the height of his popularity, um, there was an incident where he, you may have heard about the sweat lodge incident and so forth, and some people died in a sweat lodge, and, uh, sweat lodge, and that kind of killed his career. But again, it's like... <clears throat> It's like anything else, when you're reading success information, when you get information in general, you got extract the good and let and leave the bad alone. And regardless of what happened to him and his career, um, he definitely has some great things to bring to the table. And what he talked about in that book, Harmonic Wealth, was the five pillars of wealth. And he said you should have goals in each of these five areas. Financial, relational, mental, physical, spiritual and you know it, it you would think that when you think about these five pillars that it would be something about being balanced and all those but it, you know he said no balance is bogus and what he used as an example is that you might be real focused on one thing while the other things are going well and you're getting some traction and momentum with them but there may be one focus point you may be focused on getting your physical self together that doesn't mean you throw your finances out the window or your relationships out the window or definitely not your relationship with God out the window. It just means that there's a, a mental energy that you're applying to the physical to get some traction there. And throughout your life, you're always going to be running through a process of which of those five pillars, if you will, that you're the most focused on. And it's a, it's almost, I'm going to say a game, but it is a game of making sure that you're not losing traction in the other ones while you're focused on that one. I hope that makes sense. So these are five pillars. And when you really when you're doing goal setting, and I'm a big proponent of not waiting until the beginning of the year to do this, but when you're doing your goal setting, think about where would you like to be in each of these areas? You know, what's the end in mind, as Stephen Covey would say? You know, financially, where would you like to be in the next 90 days, next year? next five years and beyond. Relational, who would you like to have around in your life? What kind of relationships do you want to have in that period of time? Mental, what do you want to learn? How do you want to grow? 
you know, um, physical, obviously, being in the best shape you can be in and uh, being off medicines and those types of things. What are your goals in that area? And then spiritual. How do you want to grow spiritually? You know, these are all tangible things that you can actually list and have as goals as you move forward towards your goals and dreams. So then, how do you actually go about doing it? You have these goals. Okay, great. I have goals. But as I've mentioned before, and I'll mention again right now, the goal is to find out how to do those things. And your financial goals, who's achieved the finances that you want? Who has the kind of relationship you want? Who has, um, do you see that's growing mentally and doing things to improve themselves year over year? Who's in the physical shape you like to be like? Who has a relationship, as far as you can see, with God the way you'd like to have it? And then what can you learn from that person or those persons? What you do is you go into developing your action plan. Now, we talked last week about the difference between plans and goals and so forth. And you can go back to that and suffer through that audio. But the bottom line is you want a plan. You want a plan that you can start on. And as Tony Robbins says, success leaves clues. So how do you get that plan? Well, you might read a book. You might, and this is wonderful that you can do this, you can use search engines. You know, Google is a search engine. Everyone knows that. But guess what? So is YouTube. Because you can search on anything in YouTube, and it just so happens they're both owned by Google, right? But you can search on anything and learn all kinds of things about any type of subject area you, you, you're looking for. So you go through that process and you start getting those ideas and so forth. You may see interviews. I just saw an interview with Robert Kiyosaki where I got some additional distinctions about what he thinks just looking at that interview. It could be a podcast. You know, there's so many podcasts now and you can even play podcasts in your vehicles now. So it's incredible. Of course, you can go to seminars and really plug in and learn from the people and hear from their own mouths. There's coaching. Angie and I have uh, made it a point now over the last few years to really invest in ourselves in the area of coaching and really have people who could talk into our lives. And we're on, let's see, our third round of paid coaching where we're getting one-on-one -on -one information that we can use to move on and bless not only ourselves, but bless other people. Of course, you can attend classes. Social media is a great um, source. But I want to caution you with social media because social media is free and everyone has access to it. Be careful. Use some discernment. I wouldn't go too far down the road with what you hear on social media, but I would say that's a starting point of further investigation. Lastly, you can use your own imagination. I mean, think about how you could go about getting information. It could be that you talk to a neighbor or you see someone in your life that you see who has the fruit on the tree and you say, can I take you to lunch? Can I, you know, can I get into your mind and learn how you went about doing something? And most people not only would be flattered by that, and I've been amazed at just how soon, how easy it is to get the right people in front of you. If you say, I want to take you to lunch and I want to really understand how you did something because I see it and I want it for myself. And the most successful people are very open to such an invitation. So, develop your action plan. Now, speaking of developing your action plan, don't forget we have a free resource. I'll tell you what, we're building a community here with this tool, the Octagon Method. And the Octagon Method, you can get it at Octagon Met the Octagon Method .com. Um, I tell you what, uh, folks are getting great results with it. It's a proven principles on how to create additional streams of income from home without, and let me emphasize that, without interrupting what you're already doing. See, uh, the Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And sometimes that's a lot, that, that lack of knowledge can be because we're ignorant to the things that we have, the resources that we have, little slight things that we could do differently that make all the difference. There's a book called The Science of Getting Rich. And in that book, it talks about there's a way, a certain way to do things to get the results you want. Well, this octagon method talks about a certain way. And the wonderful thing about it is that it's free to you to get a hold of, start using, start applying, 
and you can join our community and learn more about how we're using a certain way to create success. So regardless of the kind of business you're building, you'll find some value in what's shared there. All right, so let's talk about identifying your one thing. And there's a book that came out some years ago called The One Thing. It was by a gentleman by the name of Gary Keller. And what I would encourage you to do as you're going through the process in each of those areas and you're finding your role models and you're going out and reaching out to those folks and you're and doing the, some of the things we talked about before and you're what you're really doing is you're building that daily method of operation you often hear me talk about. You're building that up because you want to get to a point where you can learn from other people's successes so you don't have to spend the time learning from your own experiences. Get it? Let me say that again. You want to learn from other people's successes so you don't have to spend the time learning from your own experiences. Well, as you're developing that um, daily method of operation, it can become overwhelming. It can get to the point where you're like, oh, there's all these ways of doing it. I'm not sure what to do, how to do it, so forth and so on. Here's what I'm going to recommend you do. I recommend that you take each of the, you look at all the things that you have to do in those areas that you're focused on. And you ask yourself this key question. What's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else will become easier or unnecessary? It's a prioritization play. It helps you figure out how to focus your time so that you're doing the right things. You know, you may find out from a source or multiple sources, 20 things you can do to increase your physical appearance. 20 things you can do to increase your health. 20 things you can do to increase your finances. But if you try to do all 20 of them, my friend, you are setting yourself up for failure. However, if you say, listen, of all the things I've heard, if I implemented this one thing, it could create the beginning of momentum. It could give me some traction in that area so that I can then move forward and start having successes. And you build your successes. You go from peak to peak. And if you're willing to do that, if you're willing to learn and get and apply, the most important thing you can do and get that traction. Maybe you can um, tack on some of the other 19 things that they <laughs> recommend on a one-by-one -one basis, but you're focused on the most important thing that's going to move you forward. Again, what's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? That means that you may find that by doing that one thing, the other stuff, the other 19 things, or some of the other 19 things that you've learned about, you don't even have to do. Because you, the one thing got you that momentum you're looking for. And as you, we'll talk more about this in the future, but as you turn those things and you're applying it through willpower, you're applying it through effort, but as you apply it over time, you start getting habit force working for you. And when you make the one thing a habit, oh my goodness, then you're positioned for great success in anything you do. Any of those five areas we talked about, those five pillars we talked about earlier. So that's what I want you to focus on. Look at those five pillars. Which one do you want to focus in on? Determine that and then find out who's done it. Find out who has the fruit on the tree and then narrow that down to the one thing. The one thing that you can do, such by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary. My friend, when you do that and you learn, learn how to use this plan, do, check, and adjust uh, cycle to keep going through and learning how it's working. You know, we talked about this last week, what to do when your plan do not work. I still got that typo there. But when you, when you do that and you look at plan, do, check, and adjust, and you do that with the one thing, you're set up for success. So my friend, don't forget the octagonmethod.com. Go there, check it out, and get a hold of it. It's free. Join that community who's learning how to build success and cracks the time. You can do it. We're rooting for you. Make this week a masterpiece. 
Master Peace, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.